Hi, my goal with this presentation is to show all the new features in Plastic SEM 4.0. We have been working for one year completely focused on this new release and actually has been like five years since we released 1.0. Since then, we have created a much simpler core and we have evolved because we really listened to you, all the suggestions to give to, you gave to us, all the new users from the community edition, and we have really reacted. So you will see a lot of the stuff you were waiting for on 4.0. It's simpler than ever, and it's also more powerful than ever. We really clean up a lot of stuff and redesign things to make them simpler and more powerful. Let me show you a little bit of the new ergonomics. The first thing you will see when Plastic SEM 4 uh, will pop up is that the GUI is different. Okay, some of you will miss the, the old black interface. There's a switch to show it, right? But the first thing is that everything is a little bit different. The menus are different. It's a little bit better integrated with the Windows uh, environment. And uh, the information has been organized with a tapped interface, which makes uh, everything a little bit faster and clearer than it was in 3.0. I'm going to explain two important concepts in Plastic SCM. The first one is the branch for task cycle, and the second one I will try to explain how controlled integration can be the future of continuous integration. Let me first position inside the whole Scrum structure. I'm going to focus on the middle part, the daily Scrum. Right? What you do on a daily basis, the daily sprint meeting and the, uh, and the related activities. So, at a certain point in time, you have already your sprint backlog and you have split it in different tasks. And here is where I'm, I'm going to start working, right? Each task is going to be the centerpiece of the whole development cycle. Each task is going to be a branch. It can sound a little bit extreme, especially if you are coming from systems like Subversion or CVS, right? But the thing is that the branch is a perfect link between your code and the plan. You have the branch, you'll have your developer switching, switching to, the, to the associated branch and working there. The thing is it's going to be the container for the changes, so there's a direct link between them. Well, once you start working on your task, you can create as many independent check-ins as you want to because you are not limited to a single check-in per task, which is basically what you do when you are just doing mainline development. At a certain point in time, you will have a pile or finished tasks. And at this moment, you'll create a new release passing the entire test suite and so on. And this release will be the starting point for the next iteration. If you are doing a sprint width of, let's say, two weeks, you can probably or most likely follow this cycle twice, so have two stable releases. I will never go for uh, a release that takes more than a week to complete, right? It can be even more frequent. You can end up having a couple of releases a day if, uh, also, but uh, never less than one a week. Okay, let me show you the value of the controlled integration versus what we call serialized or non-parallel development. Well. True parallel development cannot be achieved without branching. Look at the picture on the screen. We have different chain sets, and each cha chain set is uh, containing a task, right? This is not truly parallel, because a parallel thing will be something like what you have now on screen. Basically, different tasks with different check-ins. The tasks can, va can vary in size. Some of them can be integrated into the next release, and one, some of them will wait till the next one. But it basically uh, changes the whole, th the, the, uh, whole way of working with your SCM. If you are only working in mainline, the, the branch, the SCM is just a delivery mechanism for you as a developer. If you're working with branches, the SCM is working for you to make you more productive. You can do as many check-ins as you want, as many intermediate check-ins as you want. You can use it to even self-document your changes, explaining the refactor check-ins by check-in by check-in, things like that. It's not doable. It, you, are, you can only do a check-in when you're done. And basically, with parallel development, you avoid most of the problems, or all of them, that you have with mainline. First of all, the code should be or must be always under control. In this situation, where you have been working on a difficult task for a couple of days, but you cannot check in to the mainline because someone else is working there, or 
you have the risk to break the bill, stuff like that. If you have your own branch for the task, you can commit as frequently as you want to. Second thing is that the main line should be kept pristine. Keep it pristine, keep it clean, only containing stable baselines. The third thing, and really important, is never shoot a moving target. What happens when, okay, you released a new version here, then you continue working, and at a certain point in time, you are here. But what's this point? It's not a stable release. It's something intermediate. It's something potentially unstable. It's something that wouldn't happen if you enforce the creation of stable releases, and everyone only works against a stable release not an intermediate point. This is really key for having more frequent or more stable releases. Then, breaking task dependencies. You make a check-in fixing a really core database thing. And then the next check-in is about a change in the about form. Okay, the level of risk is really different and also they are not tied. But if you check in one and then the other, they are already linked. And they are linked because of the SDM, not, of, not because of the tasks. If you split them in different branches, then you have the freedom to integrate them independently. They can evolve independently. It's really a different way of working. And you break the task dependencies. Of course, another really interesting thing is stop the bug spreading. This is one of my favorite ones. Why? Because, OK, you are checking in, and then at a certain point in time, you check in a bug, something that happens, right? OK, if you are working on the main branch, you are already affecting the entire team. You can react. You can have a continuous integration server. You can have an alarm. You can have a red light, whatever. But you already broke the build. And there's a better way. And this better way is working on a branch. If you break your test on your branch, you just fix it, and no one else gets affected. This is really a much better way of working. And something really interesting you have probably heard of this book an excellent book about continuous integration in the last chapter they talk about the future of continuous integration and then they introduce a concept about uh, okay you know explaining uh, some sort of two-faced comment where the code is first tested because before reaching the main line right okay it is already here and it's called branch per task if you use branches, you don't, you don't really need to come up with a beautiful, new, and uh, alternative way of checking in. It's just a branch. Check in into your branch, pass the test there, and when you're done, integrate. Now I'm going to explain some of the new features in 4.0. There are three important things to, to keep in mind. Basically, the new enhanced uh, branching system, the distributed branch explorer, and also the new uh, merge system, what we call seamless merge. Let me start with the new branching system. Take a look at the screen. Uh, basically, now we have a first level citizen, which is the chain set. Okay, chain sets were, were there before, right? But now they get a new, a, a, a new status within the system. Well, a chain set is just a check-in, uh, a commit, if you prefer. It's uh, just a, a set of files that you check in together into the system. But they are more than that because they also record the entire status of your configuration, of your project. So you get a check-in, then you continue, and you get another check-in, the project evolves, a third check-in, and then, well, you know, each of them, as I said before, it's a complete configuration. You can go back to chain set 2, and you will have the project that, as it was when you commit this code, right? So you can go back and build an old version, start from it, and so on. And they are independent and, read it and ready to be built or deployed, right? So you can get one of these chain sets if, you, if there's a complete version there and just build it. This is a little bit of a difference with uh, 3.0 because, well, conceptually, they were close, but now they are much more independent than they used to be. You can really get one of them, like a full project tree, and, you know, put it in some other location, as I, as I will explain later with distributed. So, the chain sets can also evolve in parallel, and that's where the fun starts. They can just continue evolving, and this is basically what we call the branches in Plastic SCN. A branch is just a set of conta uh, 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 container of chain sets that are linked together. So you, ha you have here a couple of branches, but there's also something really important, which is the merging. Plastic also keeps track of the merging relationships. It also keeps track of what we call the, the traceability, the merge traceability, merge tracking, if you wish. 
And well, there's something very important here to keep in mind, which is no traceability, no branching. You can say, okay, should be no merging. Okay, but if you don't have proper merging, you don't have branching at all, right? Because it's a little bit pointless. Together with a new branching system, in 4.0, we have created a new merging system too. Basically now, we are able to better manage the different uh, changes, the conflicting changes you do in the directory structure too. We are able to uh, handle uh, up to the, the following list of uh, specific conflicts on the directory structure. We are able to deal with uh, divergent moves, evil twins, add move, change, delete. Basically the thing is, and the value is that Plastic SEM understands what is going on and helps you solving the underlying conflict. Let me explain it with, uh, let me explain it from the branch explorer. We'll have two branches here, a couple of them, and uh, I basically performed two different operations in parallel. In the first one, I renamed the file ACL CMD to ACL CMD renamed. And in the second one, what I did was basically the opposite. I called CMD to rename I called CMD. So basically two different renames on two different branches. Let me show you what happens when I try to merge from this branch into the second. So I will do a merge from this branch and then you see a divergent move conflict is detected. That's basically what I was talking about. Uh, Plastic SCM detects what's going on and helps you fi find out a solution. So you can Choose here and, well, decide whether to keep one or the other one. Once you, once you do that, at the end of the day, it will, keep, uh, it will be kept in checked out status and you will be able to, to, to fix it again if you want to. But the point is that you are not left with an unsolved conflict in your workspace. It's really handled by Plastic SEM for you. Let me explain to you what's new related to the distributed version control system, the distributed capabilities of Plastic SEM. There are four things we have focused on. Basically, it's better designed to be distributed. We refactor some of the core things. Uh, also, we have introduced the distributed branch explorer. You've already seen about it. We also have the new chainsaw design, which is really uh, related to the new core changes, and also the synchronization view, which is what I'm going to be talking about now. Let me switch to the GUI and show you what's new with the synchronization view. Basically, it's a new view. You can find it in other actions on our main menu and lets you configure a replication between a source repository and a destination repository. They can be worlds apart on different servers. They can be on the same server. It's actually depending on what you want to achieve. In my case, I have here a replication between my local laptop and Diana, which is our central server. And here below, you can see things like the outgoing changes from my server to Diana, so branches that I have to push in order to get in sync, and also some incoming changes, basically branches that I didn't replicate from the central server into mine. And the view can be set up to, you know, set different replications from the same view, like, uh, okay, the repository called Codice, a second one called PNG unit, stuff like that. So from a single location, I can go and do a synchronize all, or I can check what was modified, go into the change set level, and even do a diff uh, of the change set that I will be pushing or pulling. So really have control of all the distributed operations. This is this actually complements, as you can see, the distributed the distributed branch explorer because one is visual, the other is just a list. But the point is that here it's uh, really helpful to run operations on a daily basis when you really want to to know about what is going to be pushed or pulled in a graphical way, really visualizing the changes and so on without entering all the uh, power of the, of the distributed branch explorer. Another big feature in 4.0 is the X-Links. Basically, is a way we have designed to work with multiple components and version them all on a, let's say, uh, combined way. It's, uh, you can think of them as uh, externals done right basically because they let you work in a branch per task way across different repositories all linked together. Let me explain to you a little bit more. Take a look at the screen. We have a source tree here and another one here. They are two repositories. The directory called CMP actually will be pointing to the root of this second repository. This is actually an X-link. In, in this case, a writable X-link. 
the resolution of this mount is that when you download the code to your workspace, you'll see something like this. One single unified tree. X-Links are good for component-oriented development, which is the reality for al almost uh, all teams out there really having a more than, let's say, really a small code base. As you can see, you can have different projects sharing a set of different components working all together. There's a lot to tell about cross-links, but just keep in mind that they are great for splitting repositories into different components. I'm going to explain some improvements on the core STM platform. There are basically four things I will highlight. The, one of them is that we have added a new backend to the list of existing databases that we support. Uh, it's PostgreSQL. It's actually added to the list of uh, up to seven different uh, database backends, including SQL Server, MySQL, and so on. We have also improved the SSL support. The communication between the client and the server can be secured, and it, uh, it has received a lot of improvement in, in Fordero. We also have created a suite of fast import and fast export tools which lets, which lets Plastic SEM interoperate import data and export data with other SEMs, such as Git, Microsoft Team Foundation Server, Mercurial, Subversion, CVS, and almost everything out there. It's the first step into a new path of interoperability that will be releasing soon. And at last, I'm going to describe the transparent SEM, which is one of my favorite features. Let me show you. OK, let me go to the Windows Explorer and make, my cha make some changes outside the plastic SEM control. Let me do something, like for instance, I can go here to one of, the, one of the files, for instance, this one, and I will rename it. OK? OK, not a really meaningful name, but just for the sake of simplicity. Then I will remove some code, I will save my changes, and I will go back to Plastic. I will refresh my pending changes view, and Plastic SCM will detect that the file has been modified and moved locally. What does it mean? It's applying the similarity detection.